This is the closest you will ever be to a real life devil fruit from the anime One Piece. But these One Piece cosplayers have no idea they're about to get their hands on one. They just have to answer a few questions. In November of 2021, I surprised my friend Abigail with the very first custom devil fruit. Oh my! She seemed to love it and so did all of you, but then I never went back and made more. That is until I came up with the plan. The plan is to make a bunch of devil fruits and hand them out to people at SakuraCon. A year and a half ago, it took me three days to make one devil fruit, and now I have three days to make eight. Plan has five different phases that I have to execute before I can get everything ready. And phase number five is super secret because I don't know if we can get to it. But it all starts with phase one. The original devil fruit that I had had used for a mold was simply too big. So to get the right size for the mold that I need, I'm reprinting this gum gum fruit into a two and a half inch size mold. My friends at Matter Hackers provided me with a 3D printer to make sure I got this done. With my 3D prints in hand, I can check off phase one and this is so satisfying. But now I have to get into phase two, something I haven't done before. Before. This is a make you form box and what it does is it helps me vacuum mold things that I 3D print. What that basically means is I can make my own chocolate molds which I'm really excited about and I'm hoping that I have something special for you guys towards the end of this. Now the make you form box uses plastic called pet G which is the same plastic they use for coke bottles. This means it's food grade and I can't deny you guys this part. Now I have to set this up by placing the sheet of plastic on the bottom and then turning it on so the heat starts up. This vacuum is connected all the way over here to the back of the form box. Now what this does is when we kick this bad boy on, it's gonna turn on the vacuum and then it's gonna make us molds, hopefully. If the light is still blinking, hopefully this is okay. It's making a very strange uh, ticking sound. I, I don't know if I'm doing this right. As it continued to tick and heat up, this is what the plastic looks like once it softens. Now if I bring this down, the vacuum should kick on. Let's go! Oh, it didn't seal right. Look at, can you see that? It looks like right there, we have this pretty bad seal on this. We're gonna have to do this again. All right, we're gonna have to do this again. This is the first time I've ever used a form box before, but I know I can make this work. I know I can make this happen. So I'm taking a second one, pulling back that very satisfying sheet of plastic, locking and loading into the form box, and then... There we go. There we go. Okay, that looks good. This one looks so much better. Look at that, that looks way more clean. I honestly think I was being too forceful on the first one and this one was a little more gentle down on the press. I, I think this one's gonna be so much better. Let's, let's take it out and see what it looks like. Okay, let's pop this guy out, see what it looks like. I'm trying to be gentle here. Come on, get out. Maybe I can't be that gentle. Maybe if I let it cool down, it'll come out easier. So while that first one is cooling down, I'm going to peel back that sheet of plastic, lock and load the form box and make that second half of the mold. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby. We got one part mold, two part mold. Look at this. Phase one is done. That was printing the devil fruit. Then phase two is done. We have made the mold. We still, we still have to get those out of there, but we've made the mold. Now for phase three, this is gonna take a lot of time. I get to check off phase two and get back into the kitchen. Now with phase one and two out of the way, we have phase three. Now phase three is making the half chocolate shells, which I'm not that confident with. Now I actually have to get these out of here. And the way I thought of doing that is with a can of compressed air. In theory, this should work. My theory was wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna get these out. Oh, there we go. A little bit of pressure. We're out. We got a mold. Yes. That's so satisfying. You have no idea, it's so satisfying. I'm using the same technique to get the second half out and now I have a lot of chocolate work to do. With a nice clean t-shirt on, I'm ready to start making these chocolates. I've actually made these before for a couple of previous videos and while I already know that this style of plastic doesn't really allow my chocolates to pop out very easily. Now traditional chocolate or truffle molds are usually made with something called polycarbonate. The polycarbonate is actually more non-stick than these molds can be. And because this design is so intricate, I do have to cut it this way to compensate. Now once these are cut, I do have to make a slit into this because this chocolate does not pop out very easily. Just so this way we can get this chocolate out. This way we're gonna tape the top of it. I'll show you what we're gonna do. Now I don't wanna make one at a time, so I found another solution. I made a bunch more molds because I can. Next is actually melting all this chocolate. This is chocolate melts. I'm gonna throw this in the microwave, 30 second intervals until it's nice and melty. Now while that chocolate is melting, I have to tape up those cuts that I initially made on this plastic mold. This way, once I put the chocolate in there, I can take that tape off and then just release it. So hopefully, hopefully this works like it did the last time. As I'm getting these taped up, I'm making sure I pay attention to the chocolate that's still in the microwave so I can make sure it melts down properly. So I have my chocolate melted. 
which I don't think is enough. I'm probably gonna have to run to the store and grab more. I have my mold here. Now, normally, you would be able to pour. I need this to sit on something. Hold on. How does Chef do this? And I also have to keep in mind that I have to keep each of these together because they're two different sides of the devil fruit. Otherwise, they won't match up. I'm just gonna see if this works. Perfect, that's all I needed. Now as I'm pouring this, I realize I'm going to run into a very significant problem. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need so much more chocolate. I do not have an infinite supply of chocolate. It's kind of unfortunate. Now after a few minutes, I have to dump out all the excess chocolate. Okay, we have a layer. We have a layer going here. That's good, that's a plus. What's not a plus is I have to do this 15 more times. I just wanna make sure that there isn't a silly amount of chocolate in here because otherwise it ends up being too thick for a chocolate bomb. With the remaining chocolate that I have, I'm making the second and half of that mold so this way we can test this. Now I just have to wait for it to solidify for like five minutes before I do it, maybe longer. While the chocolate was cooling down, I turned the mold over and over just so this way it would evenly coat the edges of the chocolate. You know what? I think I'm just gonna go for it. Let's do the next set. Sometimes my excitement gets the better of me, but in this case, I was really happy that it did. Since this is just gonna be the tester, I just have to try to use it with the leftover chocolate that I have to make sure this actually works. I was able to get essentially two devil fruits made with the chocolate that I have. I'm gonna need a lot more chocolate. But before I went and got more chocolate, I popped these shells into the freezer so this way they could set for about five minutes. So this way I can hopefully pop them out and have an idea of how to do this. These have been in the freezer for about five minutes after letting them sit at room temperature for a few minutes. Now my worry, like I have normally when I'm making these, is that they're gonna shatter just a bit on the edges. I'm trying to find a better method for it so I have a backup somewhere to see if those are gonna work too. Now here is the moment of truth. Gonna peel back this tape, probably need gloves. And I'm just hoping, oh, oh, beautiful. Oh my God, that came right out. It's the best, it's the best feeling knowing that this worked. Let's get these other ones out. I still have to be super careful when peeling back the tape and making sure that these come out without really breaking at all. There it is. We got two. Now we gotta do eight more. I don't care. I'm excited. These worked. Now I need more chocolate like a lot more chocolate. I went ahead and melted down a bunch more chocolate and then started pouring everything into my molds and dumping it out just like I did before. I have to repeat this process quite a few times to make sure I get enough molds. I made sure that I twirled each one around so this way I would have full coverage and after way too long, I have my molds ready. I put these in the freezer for around five minutes so this way the molds fully set up. Batch number two. And the most satisfying part is removing all the chocolate from their molds and finally getting all of these chocolate pieces done. Here's one of my favorite things to do so far, crossing off things on the plan. We have phase three done. We have to still fill them with the good good. We're gonna do that right now. So this check mark is justified. To make sure that these half shells do not roll around while I'm working with them, I have to place them into these tiny bowls. Wait a second, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I did something wrong. Oh, I took an extra one. Oh my God, which one's which? I really hope I didn't just mess up the whole process. Now to make sure that these things line up properly, I have to trim off any excess chocolate from the edges of each of these half shells. Now the next thing I have to do is actually fill all of these. You wanna see this buddy? This is hot cocoa from Starbucks. Once I was able to fill the first one, I knew that this was going to work. I'm placing all of my hot cocoa mix into each one of those little half shells just in the bottom. This way I can set it up to where I can add the next piece because the next piece is very crucial. Now you can't have a hot cocoa bomb without mini marshmallows. Mini marshmallows are absolutely clutch here and would be a miss to not have them. Once each half now has the hot cocoa and the marshmallows, I'm using a plate that I microwave to heat up some of this chocolate. Doing it this way keeps everything really flat and it allows me to seal the two halves together. Last one. This is exciting. Still have to paint all of them, but still. Before I paint all of these, I have to fully seal them with leftover chocolate. If they're not fully sealed, we're gonna have hot milk leaking into the center of these and no one wants that. And before we paint, let me tell you about this headband. If you want your own reversible headband and my brand new cookbook, you can pick that up at the link down below. After you've pre-ordered my brand new cookbook and my headband, we're gonna start painting these things. And since these have so many details, I actually have to hand paint everything. And to do that, I'm using a bit of Everclear, which is just alcohol, as well as some purple luster dust. Luster dust is an edible paint that you can use to color any kind of chocolates or cake or really anything that you have. Now these bad boys have to cure for another hour or two before I seal them. Then we can finally package them and, and check off 
phase 3.5. But you may be wondering, Paul, those are not finished. They still need the stems. And that is where I have to hand pipe a bunch of stems. The reason why I have to hand pipe these is because this is actually the fastest way to get these done. And I really want to work on phase five. I don't know if we can still get to that. But for now, I'm just going to paint all these stems with a bit of green luster dust paint that I set up as well. And after painting the stems, I have to seal these devil fruits so this purple does not come off. And that is where edible glaze comes in. The edible glaze is actually a candy liqueur that allows me to seal the purple on any of my devil fruits. This way, once it dries, it gives it a really nice shiny look to it. And none of this will come off onto your cosplays because I would hate for that to happen. I also have to make sure I glaze the tester. This is the one I'm going to eat and drink and whatever it's going to be just to make sure this all works. I don't know if any of this is going to work. Once the glaze has set up, it's actually time to put on all of the stems. And to do that, I'm heating a skewer over the stove and using the hot tip to melt some of that chocolate. So this way it acts as glue to be able to place the stem right on top of the devil fruit. I love this. This is, a, this is so much fun to me. I really hope you guys like this. Adding the stems makes me feel like I'm so close to that finish line. I'm so close. I have eight completed. Oh God, please don't break. Hot chocolate devil fruit hot chocolate devil fruit bombs. It's a very weird thing to say. Now we get to package them. Now I wanna make sure whoever wins one of these at SakuraCon has a good experience opening this thing up. To make it look as cool as possible, I'm placing each devil fruit in its own special candy bag. This bag is gonna help protect everything, so this way nothing gets messed up when we transport them. I also added a little note so you know how much hot milk to use with these devil fruits once you open them up. After tying them off with a very cool little purple tie, these things were ready to package. And this is what the final product will look like. This set of devil fruits is probably one of the coolest things I've ever made and I can't wait for you guys to have them. We did it. We have our hot chocolate devil fruit bombs ready to go. Now there's only one thing left, two things left to do. Phase 3.5 of the plan is done. Now we have to get to SakuraCon and we still have to test one to see if it works. I really hope it does. To test this, I have to use my Jujutsu Kaisen mug with around 12 ounces of hot milk. Here's the moment of truth. I don't know if this is gonna work. Godspeed. Please melt. Oh, it's sinking. Yes. Sink more. <laughs> oh my God, it worked. Look at the marshmallows. This is so cool. Look at it. Okay, let's give it a stir. <gasps> it... Dude, come on. That's cool. Rachel's looking at me like I'm crazy. That is cool. I'm so happy right now. Oh, it smells so good. That was three days of work to do those. And I'm so glad it finally worked. Cheers. Oh, it's gonna be hot. It's really good. <laughs> Come try. It's hot. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. See you at SoccerCon. Let's go. To make this feel super official, I put these devil fruits inside my very own treasure chest. This way we can show people the pirate's booty. But I also forgot my hat. So I need to go find my hat. Let's go. SakuraCon is filled with cosplayers, merchandise, and everything you could think an anime fan would want. So I tracked down some One Piece cosplayers when I ran into Law. So Law, I'm gonna ask you three questions. You have to get two of them right to win a devil fruit. And it's a gum gum fruit. All right. Okay. First one, what member number of the Straw Hats is Sanji? Number four. He's actually the fifth member. Uh, He's the fifth member. What devil fruit did Luffy eat? Uh, the gum gum for a model Nico. Yeah, okay, I like that you elaborated on that. How many swords does Zoro use at any given time? Three. Perfect. All right, he wins one. Do you want to show him what he got? <laughs> oh, that looks nice. Thank you, man. That's for you. That's a uh, that's a gum gum fruit hot chocolate bomb. Oh, oh boy. Yes, enjoy. Everything is going according to Keikaku, and I found my next victim, Zoro. What is Zoro's main attack called? Damn it. Oh no. I don't remember. It's it's a food. It's a food? Yeah. Man, I don't remember. Oh, that one's Onigiri. That's a... <laughs> How about this one? Here's another Zoro question. How many swords does Zoro usually use? Three. Three. Okay, we'll do three. Yeah. Alright. Which devil fruit did Luffy eat? Well, he says the gum gum fruit, but... Now anyway. yeah, we all know, right? There is. Alright, you get this. This is what you get. That... That is a chocolate gum gum fruit. That's, that's amazing. 
Yeah, enjoy that. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. I was having a hard time finding my straw hat until I came across this booth that had these really thick Pikachu decals and stickers. I was so enamored by the thick Pikachu that I didn't even see the hat until someone else pointed it out to me. I took a look at it, inspected it, and then thought, $30. So I said no and found Zoro. Which straw hat member uses his feet for battle so his hands stay clean? No, you know this. Ooh, yeah, oh, that starts. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I was like, you know this. It's the pressure. It's the pressure. Here's the here's second one. What name did Luffy use in the Coliseum battle in Dressrosa? Um, I actually don't know this one. This one's Lucy. Lucy. He used Lucy. Here's the last one. I want you to win this. What devil fruit did Luffy eat? The Gumgum fruit. Perfect. That's the winner. Okay. This is what you get. Oh, wow. That is a uh, hot chocolate bomb devil fruit. Oh my gosh. That is for you. Please enjoy. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope you like it. And as we made our way outside, we ran into the infamous buggy. All right, buggy. Here's the first question. All right. How many sections does Nami's staff have? Ooh, I'm going to go with... Uh... Three. Three is correct. You gotta get one more right to win this. Who's the musician of the Straw Hats crew? That would be Brooke. Brooke is correct. He wins a, He wins whatever's in here. I haven't even told you what it's in. Oh my God. <laughs> this can come in use. It's not your fruit, but hopefully it'll come in use. Yeah, that's a good prize. Oh, Thank I hope you, you like sir. it. You're welcome. After giving Buggy his due reward, we went outside and found all of these Chainsaw Man cosplayers and we had to pull aside Denji to see if he knew what's up. Which devil fruit does Luffy eat? Gum gum. That is, that's correct. Gum gum fruit. So you gotta do two more. You gotta answer one more correct to win this. Okay, uh, who do I wait? Oh, you'll see. You'll see. Who gave Shanks his scar? Shanks his scar? Uh, white beard? No, that is not correct. It's actually black beard. Black yeah, that's, it was close. It was close. Okay, okay, got it. Last one. How many swords does Zoro use? Oh, shit. Uh, say, how many is he known for using? Three swords. Three swords. All right, he went. Uh, this is what you get. <laughs> That's a uh, edible devil fruit. Oh, it's yeah. ours? Yes. Ah, oh, so yes, nail it. Oh, can you even hold it? <laughs> Look, Montanella, the one set date. Wow. For one second, Montanella. For one second. The cosplayers are the best. So I followed Sailor Jupiter around the convention until I found this guy who swears he knows everything about One Piece. What name did Luffy use in the Coliseum battle during the Dressrosa arc? Uh, this one's top. Lucy. Yo, he got Lucy. Okay, that's it. I, I All right. with Luffy. No, you're good. Okay, so you have to answer one more correctly to win this. Okay. Okay. Which Straw Hat member only uses his feet for battle oh, to Sanji. keep- Oh, that was too easy. All right, he wins. Let's see what he gets. Oh, wow. That's incredible. You made this? Yeah. That's, that's a That's a custom gum gum fruit hot chocolate bop. Oh. So drop it in some hot milk. Have yourself some hot cocoa. It's filled that with everything so you need. Cool. I got gum gum fruit. Yeah, man. Enjoy. Oh, man. This is incredible. Thank yeah, you. You're very welcome. Have a good con, man. Me too. Man. Yeah. Do you guys fist bump or handshake? I don't know. I grew up in a kitchen, so all I do is fist bump. I wandered around the convention trying to look for my hat again and made my way to the top floor when I ran into Robin, who wanted to try to win one of these devil fruits. Who is Luffy's childhood idol? Shanks. Oh, that was okay. I didn't. I didn't it's, it's right here, Shanks. It's fair. Okay. I didn't think anywhere to get that. That's good. Shanks is the correct answer. Which member? of Luffy's crew knows Fishman Karate. Jinbei. Oh my God. <laughs> you get the big prize. Here, take your pick. Choose wisely. Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> oh my God, this is so cool. That is a gum gum fruit hot chocolate bomb. <laughs> With phase four finally out of the way, we have to move into super secret phase five and I can't do this alone. So I'm gonna bring you guys along with this. Let's go. Now phase five actually involves my own panel here at SakuraCon. Halfway through the panel, I wanted to surprise people with a bit of One Piece trivia. And that's exactly what we did. We brought some people up on stage. We answered some trivia questions and the winner got their very own devil fruit. But that's not the end of phase five. The true test of phase five admittedly happened way before we even got to SakuraCon. You see, I really wish I could have made a ton of these devil fruits 
to give to people because it really makes me happy being able to do this. So instead, I made three more mini devil fruits using the same methods that I used before for the giant devil fruit. I made my 3D print, then used the form box to make the mold, cast everything in chocolate, hand painted everything, and then packed them in this Tokyo treat box I've been carrying around this entire video. The biggest reason why I wanted to do this is because I know people come to these things with friends and family, so I wanted them to partake in this together. Just like in One Piece, a lot of these events are about family. Bringing friends, family, and loved ones to events like this really does create some amazing memories. So truly and thank you for letting me be a part of your adventures. My name is Chef PK and remember, keep playing with your food. I also never found a hat so I just rocked the afro.